Bonjour Genie Engineers, welcome to my problem a day series. In this video, we're going to calculate the moment of inertia about the x-axis. Now, if you're for the first time and you just want to learn about engineering or just how to engineer a better life, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Now, let's get started. Oh yeah, everybody now. Okay guys, so we need to calculate the moment of inertia about the x-axis and it has to be in meters to the power of 4. Now note guys that this is not a symmetric shape, which means that we have to first determine the centroid, which we already did in the previous video, and also we're going to have to use the parallel axis theorem. Now if the shape was symmetric, we usually don't use parallel axis theorem, we just calculate the moment of inertia, and I will talk about it in a little bit as well. So let's first check what we did in our previous problem, just kind of a quick review. So we calculated the centroid y bar, right? We set up this to be our datum. So this is our y bar. So now what we need to do is let's write the equation down for moments of inertia about the x-axis. And note here that this is x-axis. So we're trying to find the moment of inertia about this axis right here. So the equation is on page 72 on the reference handbook. So let's start with ixc. So just like we did in the previous problem, we're going to actually divide this into two parts. So we have part one and then this is part two. And we're going to solve the moment of inertia the same way. We're going to do the first part and then we're going to add the second part. So Ixc, this just means the moment of inertia of the part that you are working with. So for our case, we have a rectangular shape. Moment of inertia, it's bh cubed over 12 for uh, ix. Also keep in mind that when you have moment of inertia about the y-axis, it's actually hb cubed over 12. So just be careful with that. So what I'm going to actually do is just write the equation so we don't have to do it twice. So just keep in mind the bh cubed over 12. I'm just going to actually write it here. So I have ix is equal to bh cubed over 12. This is for moment of inertia for a rectangular shape. And then here, I'm just going to plug in the numbers so we go a little bit faster. So B is 15. H is 30, because that's my height. That's H. The H is the cubed one. So just be careful. And then we have D squared Y times A. So I'm going to actually start with the area because it's easier. And I'm going to explain this distance right here, what it means. You take the centroid of the part you're dealing with to the centroid of the whole shape that we calculated in the previous video. So it's this distance right here. So this is my dy1. Centroid of this part, which we said this is going to be 15. And then this is from here to here, that's my y bar. So I'm going to take this y bar and subtract from it this distance which is half of 30, which is 15. I hope that makes sense, guys. It can be a little bit tricky, but it's really easy once you, you understand it. And at the end, I'm going to actually show you a very simple trick that you can use during the exam so you don't have to draw this whole thing and it's going to take you a little bit more time. Again, let's recap. So we said it's going to be y, and I'm going to subtract from it half of this distance, which is going to give me d dy, which is from the centroid of the whole shape, to the centroid of the part we're working with. So let me write it down. So we have 48.85 minus 15, which is this distance, the whole thing squared, don't forget squared. Okay, so this is my first part here, we did that. Now I need to do for the second part. So I have plus, I have again rectangular, so it's going to be bh cubed over 12. Now b here is 30, h is 80, this is cubed over 12. Then I have the area, which is 80 times 30. And now what we want to do again, same thing as earlier. So we want to do the centroid of this portion right here, of this member, to the centroid, wherever my centroid is. So it's going to be this distance. So this is my dy2. So we calculated in the previous video, we said that this, this distance from here to here is 70, right? It's right here, it's this one, this is 70, so because we did 30, and then we added half of this length, which is 40, so that gives you 70. So what we can do is do 70, which is this whole distance from here, all the way here, and subtract the centroid, that gives you your dy2. It's really easy. So let's write that down. So I have 70 minus my centroid, which is 48.85 squared. 
So that's pretty much your moment of inertia. Now, let me show you guys a trick that I do. So usually when you have this type of problems, what I do is I always take the centroid and I subtract from it my yn. So if you remember from the previous problem, we said this is the area and this is y1, right? And you know how I always start with the area and then I determine y. I always have it like that because it is a system that helps me to go faster. So what I do is I take the centroid and I subtract from it 15 and that's what we have here. So that's how you find dy in the fastest way. Now the second one is the same thing. Y and then you subtract from it this one. It doesn't matter if you do 70 minus 48 or 48 minus 70 because even if you do get negative, you have a square here, everything gets squared, everything becomes positive. Centroid minus 15, centroid minus 70, and then I have my dy. So before we plug in, there's one more thing we need to do is actually convert this to meters to the fourth because that's what the question asks. So this is what we have. I have 1000 millimeters is equal to one meters. Now the whole thing has to be to the power four. So my units cancels and I'm left with meters to the fourth. So don't forget to raise this term right here to the power four, it's very important. So if you plug in all this, you will get 4.18 times 10 to the power of minus six meters to the fourth. And that should be your answer. Okay guys, so as a homework problem, why don't you try to calculate the moment of inertia about the y axis Try to solve it and leave your answer in the comments below. Okay, guys, so if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below and I'll make sure to address it in the future. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make sure you share with your friends who might find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon. A la prochaine. Oh, yeah. Everybody now.